Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. And in today's video, we're gonna show you the proper way to set up a bumper pull camper. Ours happens to be a Cherokee Gray Wolf 29 foot bunkhouse. We start by chalking the wheels every time. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is lower the stand. And I like to do it with about an inch below it. And you'll notice we're just trying to get it level and move some of the rocks underneath here. Perfect, right there. All right, so we're just going to keep lifting this until these bars get loose. Pull the little pitch clip. Yeah, pull that out and then pull that little thing out of there. Oh, watch you don't touch them there. Greasy as hell on the bottom. I'm going to keep rising until this comes off of here. No, I don't want to reset yet. First, you have to get these off and pull that one out. All right. Oh, yeah. I'm always touch them up here. There's grease and nasty stuff on the end there. All right. Put these back in and latch them. And now we're going to go down. So we're going to go down far enough to get this off of here. We'll move the truck and then we'll level the camper and then we'll put all the jacks down. Chains off of here. This is just an emergency brake. And then I just loop it up there. It seems to work well there. All right, keep going up. Get over? Yeah. All right. We often move forward just a few inches, but leave the trailer connected electrically so we're taking the charge from the vehicle and not the battery from the camper. Right, we're going to start lowering this until we get it level. Tell me when. That's it. So once level, we want to go ahead and disconnect our power and make sure we plug it right into its little holding space here. And then I'm going to start removing the stabilizer bars. Just lift up on the bottom, pull the tab out, and away they go. Yeah. They just, these little tabs, you pull that out, and then, like, when you're putting it in. Yeah, you pull it out, and then it hangs there. All right. And now it's a matter of putting some spacers underneath the jacks. This is not required, but I love these little blocks. You can get them at Camping World. I think there's about 10 blocks in each of these with a little screw-in handle. It certainly helps avoid how far you have to lower the jacks and you keep them in a little bit more of a stable position. So we'll go ahead and get several stacks of these, one for each of the four corners, and then we'll start putting them underneath here. We also have this rubber pad that goes on top of them. It helps reduce some of the noise inside the camper. They work shockingly well. Um, worth picking up. I can put some links in the descriptions below. But now it's just a matter of lowering the jacks. And we don't have electric jacks on this. And frankly, I don't know that it's worth it. You can get a three quarter inch nut driver on a drill and do this. But I turn it about uh, three quarters of a turn beyond tight. That way I'm just taking a little bit of that pressure off of the tire itself. And as they say, it's just a matter of rinse and repeat. And there you go. We put a three quarter inch socket on our um, cordless drill and certainly it goes down pretty nice. I'm now taking that off. I don't want to use those for putting the pressure on it. I like to use my hands and a manual jack. It lets me feel the amount of pressure I have. And again, you notice I put it right down there where it's making a, a good solid pressure. And then I turn it about another three quarters of a turn or so. And the back ones work the same way. So we'll just speed up this footage and get these done. I also have these um, tandem wheel locks. I don't know how necessary they are, and we don't typically set them up if we're just setting up the camper for a short amount of time. But we're leaving the camper in this spot for um, quite, a, quite a few weeks, so we want to go ahead and stabilize them. It just locks the wheels together. Uh, a chalk will do just about the same thing, but this with the motion in the camper kind of helps hold everything real steady. Worth getting if you think you're going to be somewhere for more than a week or so at a time. Permanently, I'm going to try and see if the threads will grab in here. They almost did. There we go. All right, grab that other piece there, that red one. 
So when connecting your gray and black water hoses, it's always good to have a few extra segments in the event you need to lengthen your hose. Interestingly enough, the drain was about five feet into the campsite next to us here, which kind of stinks, but that's the way it works. So we're now just uh, clipping these two pieces of hose together and then latching the hose to the actual uh, gray and black water discharge on the side of the camper. It really is just that simple. Be sure you untwist them though, so that they're not twisted and, and kinked in any place. I now have one of these um, these small accordion type uh, pipe holders, and what it does is it allows it to have a gradual um, uh, downward slope toward the actual sewer drain. I find these to be really, really useful. They weigh about five pounds. They don't take up a lot of space, made of just plastic, and you can get them online. I'll put some links in the description. Pretty handy to have. Over here. Yeah, right here. Hey, do me a favor. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like it, subscribe to the channel and click on that little bell notification so you get notified of new videos. Thanks. And now we'll go ahead and hook up the electric. I like to do all of these first before moving the room out. That way we're doing this again off power and not the battery. It also gives you a little bit more working space on this side of the camper. So the first thing you want to do is make sure your breakers are off and that you have a plug for your style. Ours happens to be 30 amp. On this particular camper, this is a lot like a marine plug. You actually find the um, the one leg that has sort of an L shape. You pop it in, and you turn it about an eighth of a turn to the right. It latches it, and then you just screw this little ring in to help hold it to the camper. At this stage, with the breaker off, you're now going to go ahead and just put the plug into the actual 30 amp socket, and then you want to turn the breaker on after you have it connected. Now we're just going to go ahead and fold out the steps. Uh, there's a little latch right here. I usually have these adjusted pretty well for almost any height, but we'll see. Yeah, that looks good. If, like, if the baby's moving stuff down here and you need to put something underneath that, just use one of those little yellow things. You don't want this to, that needs to be secure or you'll tear it off the door. Yeah. Push this and hold it down until the room stops. Go ahead, I'll let you do it. Go for it. There you go. There's a couple things you need to know. That can't, that thing runs on electricity or propane. Okay, so we left the propane on so that it was keeping cool. If you open the freezer, it should still be cold. Is it? Yeah. All right, good. So it, I should have come in and looked at it. It would have been a yellow light running on propane. Um, once we plugged in, it goes to the green light. With the propane tanks on on the front of the camper, you just turn on the gas grill and then you flip the igniter switch on the far left and you can see the flames light. It really is quite that simple. Okay, so that's where the pilot light is. So we turn it to the flame. Go ahead, I'll let you do it. Turn it to the flame, push in. Maybe you don't have to do that. Now, turn that. All right, and if you look, you'll see the flame down there. I can see the reflection. Okay. Now, when it's cold, you have to hold that in for 10 to 15 seconds. Go ahead and let go. All right, if it stays on, it's good. And now you can just turn it on. Okay. okay. This is like the boat, right? This is the water pump. So this takes water out of the tank that's under the camper, and it uses that, not what's coming in from the hose. So right now, we've turned it on. We'll have some water pressure. I don't have much water in here. Now this panel right here by the back door shows you how you can check all the different levels on the boat. So you'll notice on the bottom right is the water pump. On the bottom is, if you press it, it's the battery. Then you can see the fill of the uh, gray water, the fresh water, and the black water. And then this switch on the bottom left is how you turn on the heater for the boat, uh, for the camper. And just like that, the camper is all set up and ready to go. Time to step back, admire your work, pull out a chair, and enjoy the camping experience. Thanks, everybody. Have a great one, and we will see you next week. Mm -hmm.